Batman Arkham Knight turned six years old this summer, and that might just be the most terrifying thing I've ever said aloud in one of these lists. But just like Arkham Asylum and Arkham City before it, Rhapsody made sure to include a Scrooge McDuck-sized vault of secrets and goodies in the game. I'm Ewan, you're watching What Culture Gaming, and here are the 10 coolest Easter egg secrets and references from Batman Arkham Knight. Number 10. Red Hood Totally Killed Killer Moth Jason Todd's burgeoning days as Red Hood play out in Knight's first story pack, which serves as one of many epilogues Rocksteady developed to expand upon the game's finale. Here, just like in Jason's original return in the comics, he's going up against Black Mask, but it turns out Roman Slayonis wasn't the first name on his hit list. In the first stealth section of the DLC, one of Black Mask's thugs remarks how Red Hood had actually killed Kill Him Off. Clearly Jason was working his way up to the big leagues, but still, it's pretty sad to learn of modern Moth's death, given it means his chances of appearing in Rocksteady's Suicide Squad are now effectively zilch. Number 9. Man Bat's Halloween Escape Man Bat's side mission is short but sweet, but it includes a hefty dose of horror and a great jump scare that caught everyone off guard while they were grappling across Gotham's rooftops. After a couple of chases through Gotham, the player apprehends Man Bat and takes them to the GCPD lockup, where Kirk in his human form remains. There's more to the story afterwards though, and it's something players can miss if they're unlucky. If you visit Langstrom's cell on Halloween, or simply change your console's date to October 31st at any time of the year, you'll discover that it's been broken and that he's nowhere to be found. The officer nearby confirms his escape, and given the she-bat easter egg visible in Langstrom's own lab too, chances are there are now double the bat creatures in Gotham than there were at the game's beginning. Number 8. Starro in a Matter of Family The Matter of Family DLC developed by Warner Brothers Montreal was released a few months after Arkham Knight's launch and told a brand new story set before the events of Arkham Asylum, putting players in control of Barbara Gordon, aka Bad Girl, as she and Robin attempted to apprehend the Joker and Harley Quinn, who had taken over an offshore rig near Gotham. While exploring the rig, players could encounter multiple easter eggs referencing Starro, the Justice League's first ever villain and star of one of Batman Beyond's best ever episodes. Posters describing one of Starro's victims as the Starfish Freak can be seen dotted around, and exploring near the Ferris wheel, players can actually find a tube housing the deadly alien, just ominously floating, no doubt waiting for the next victim. No Starro, no, ah! Number 7. Sweet Tooth from Holy Musical Batman Okay, so chances are this is a reference to the actual Batman character called Sweet Tooth, but there's only one Sweet Tooth we recognize in this house, and that's the one seen in Team Star Kid's Holy Musical Batman, which you should all go watch immediately if you haven't already. Thugs across Arkham Knight's Gotham mention Sweet Tooth by name, calling him the Candy Killer, and that he'd even used an arsenic strudel as a weapon. The original Sweet Tooth made his debut in the New Adventures of Batman TV show from the late 70s, but it wasn't until 2012 that the character cemented themselves as a true great of the Dark Knight's rogues gallery. The sweet tooth of holy musical Batman is a true terror, deploying candy-themed puns and poison candy against his enemies, and was the main villain to step into the power vacuum created by the Joker's death, which occurs offstage in the play, naturally. Could a similar version of events have occurred shortly after Arkham City? It's doubtful, but you would like to think old Sweet Tooth had something to say in the post-Joker order of things, even if he doesn't make a physical appearance in Arkham Knight. Number 6. Direct References to the Comics the secret to a good adaptation often lies in pulling inspiration from a variety of different sources, at least when it comes to comics specifically. Rocksteady did just that when it came to creating the Arkhamverse, even referencing specific comics and wider Bat media in all three of their Arkham titles. Arkham Knight includes a lot of these references, and more so than the previous entries because it takes direct inspiration from a number of specific storylines. There's a scarecrow-induced flashback to the killing joke, where Batman is forced to witness Barbara being paralyzed by the Joker, and then of course the nods towards other such stories that inspired Arkham Knight's narrative, including Batman Beyond Return of the Joker and Under the Red Hood. The game also makes direct reference to classic Batman comics such as The Cult and The Long Halloween, with Jack Ryder pitching a headline for his expose on Deacon Blackfire as The Cult, and Alfred Pennyworth mentioning to Bruce how Professor Pig's spate of killings bore similarities to the holiday killer from Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's seminal Year 2 tale. Number 5. Batwoman and Lex Luthor's Voice Messages 
If the billboards showcasing other locations in the DC Universe and Hugo Strange name dropping Keystone and Metropolis in Arkham City was enough to get Arkham fans ridiculously excited, then you can imagine what happened when they discovered these two recordings on Bruce Wayne's answering machine in Arkham Knight. Bruce's Wayne Tower office features in both the main story and in a side mission that resolves the identity thief slash hush arc from Arkham City, and it includes a few interesting goodies, the coolest of which can be found on his answering machine. Should the player move Batman to his office phone, they'll be able to listen to a few select recordings that confirm the presence of some of the DCU's biggest characters. First up is Kate Kane, aka Batwoman. Kate rings up Bruce to ask how he is and whether or not he'll be attending her engagement party with Maggie Sawyer, a Metropolis detective who later joined the GCPD. This is a pretty cool reference all on its own, and it gives me just the slightest bit of hope that we could one day see a Batwoman game inspired by Hayden Blackman and J.H. Williams' Batwoman comics, with which would be amazing. Second, and arguably more significant, is the message left by Lex Luthor. Numerous references to Lex and his Kryptonian arch-rival Superman can be found while playing Arkham Knight, but this time we have a voice to go with the name, and learn that Luthor's trying to buy Wayne Tech's Applied Sciences division. Number 4. Constantine, The Flash, and the wider DC Universe Arkham Knight's rendition of Gotham may include a buttload of references to iconic characters from Batman's history, but it also ventures into the far corners of the DC Universe as well. Hidden within Rocksteady's recreation of Gotham are references to The Flash, a cell for Gorilla Grodd can be spotted in the Season of Infamy DLC while apprehending Killer Croc, John Constantine, a Gotham storefront bearing his name can be seen in-game, Green Arrow, Queen Industries has a presence in Miyagani Island, and Wonder Woman, whose symbol can be found across the open world. Cooler still, if players go to Oracle's Clock Tower, they'll also be able to spot some correspondence between her and Huntress, a fellow member of the Birds of Prey. Rocksteady are finally set to deliver on these nods to the wider DCU in the upcoming Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which will pit Task Force X against an evil Superman and, assumedly, his other brainwashed cohorts. Number 3. GCPD Shifts Confirm Martian Manhunter and The Question Batman the Animated Series fans were pretty excited when Harvey Bullock featured in Arkham Origins, with Robert Costanza reprising the role from the series no less, but he was nowhere to be seen in Night, nor was his partner, Rene Montoya. However, both detectives do make the cut in the form of a small easter egg in the GCPD, which shows their names on a shift list accompanied by another icon of DC's comics. Montoya's name has a question mark written next to it, which is a pretty sneaky reference to her superhero alter ego in the comics, The Question. One name on the list that Justice League fans in particular will enjoy though is John Jones, aka John Johns, aka Martian Manhunter. John took up a position as a detective with the GCPD when he first arrived on Earth in the comics, with the implication being here that he's still yet to reveal his true self to the world in the Arkhamverse. Number 2. Beware the Grey Ghost Batman the Animated Series was a pretty big influence on the Arkham franchise. Not only did Rocksteady opt to reuse the series' voice cast, at least in respect to Batman the Joker and initially Harley Quinn 2, the studio also utilized the talents of Paul Dini to construct the overarching narrative of Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. Betas' influences are plain for all to see across the Arkham series, but Arkham Knight has by far the coolest nod towards the show in the form of a poster referencing the Grey Ghost, which can be found in Oracle's Clock. Tower. The Legend of Zorro has long been a formative influence on Bruce Wayne in the comics, but Betas opted to showcase another figure who inspired its own version of Batman in an episode called Beware the Grey Ghost. It's a genius episode, not just because it celebrates one of the Dark Knight's most beloved on-screen figures, but also because it highlights one of his biggest literary influences too, The Shadow. The Grey Ghost is a fictional hero in the DC animated universe, and one portrayed by an actor voiced by 60s Batman star Adam West. The episode eventually sees West's character don the Grey Ghost mantle once more, with Batman fighting side by side with his childhood hero. And number 1. Arkham's creative director has a cameo right at the beginning. Each Arkham game has featured an absolute banger of an intro, and Arkham Knight is no exception. The opening puts you in the shoes of a Gotham cop as they step into Paulie's Diner, a reference to Batman writer Paul Dini for a bite to eat. It's the calm before the storm, and a number of sly references can be spotted as you look around. However, there's also a blink and you'll miss it cameo from Sefton Hill right as you enter the diner, which is really cool because Hill served as the creative director for Rocksteady on Arkham's Asylum, City, and Night. 
And those were some of the coolest easter eggs from Batman Arkham Knight. What are your favourites from the threequel? Let us know in the comments below and while you're down there it would be great if you could like the video if you enjoyed it and to subscribe to World Culture Gaming so you don't miss another upload going forward. I've been Ewan, you can follow me on Twitter at Ewan Ruins Things, and I will see you next time. Bye!